Okay, now time for the 1324 class for Tuesday, July 19th, the fourth day of the semester. In 1324, we also had two days last week, Thursday and Friday, to kind of prepare for the class. Monday, July 18th, we did 1 through 14 in the week one homework. So we'll be picking up with number 15 here in just a second. Go into... Uh, let's see, course home of my math lab, and I'm looking for the 1324 class now. And under assignments, so this has one homework for the entire week. I like it a little better that way. The other assignments were given to me, but um, that way you can just, you only have to work on one the whole time. You don't have to keep opening and closing assignments. So we did 1 through 14 last time. We'll get to about 15 through 27 or 28 today. And then the rest tomorrow. And then just like the 0342 class, Thursday and Friday are your work and study days to finish up any homework you haven't done, study, review. And then 0342 takes a quiz either on Thursday or Friday or both because the quiz you can do more than once. 13, 24, you take a test on a Thursday or a Friday, but you only get one attempt. So make sure you don't take the test till you're ready. Okay, this is a thing you see often in the real world. They often don't include this on a formula sheet. So if you need this, my formula sheet doesn't have this, but um, this, your tests are basically open note and open book. So all you have to do is write any formula down that you've seen in the homework on some sheet of paper. So it turns out the formula for this, APY is annual percentage rate. So this is the only question that needs this, but APY, A, whoops, I gotta turn my pen on, APY, annual percentage rate. This started, it's supposed to help consumers not be misled into things. People would write contracts and kind of trick somebody buying a car or a house into how much they're actually paying. So it's very similar to the formula for interest, compounded interest. You have a 1 plus R over N to the NT power. That's very similar to this right here future value with compound interest it has the same exact parenthesis there is no a or p in the front though it's not about future value or present value so we don't have that a or p involved in fact the a is like this here and then one last thing is then you minus one which changes it back to a decimal and then you could change it to a percentage to and quote a percentage so it's actually a little easier to do than the ones we were doing at the end of last time. Okay, what is the annual percentage yield for money invested at an annual rate of 4.24% compounded monthly? So we're compounding monthly, that makes N12. We have 4.24, then we'll do a part B that's 4.25. And that's basically all you need. There's less variables involved here. Whoops, okay. So I'm definitely gonna have the one plus, R was 4.24, I believe it was, 4.24 compounded monthly. So change that 4.24 to 0424. Remember how you move the decimal twice? I'm trying to find a space to write this in there. 4.24, if you move the decimal over twice, you'll get 0.0424. Compounded monthly, so that's 12, and that always goes twice. Now it could be a number of years, but they just said annual, I believe. Annual, annual means once a year. So they just want to know what would this be for one year? 
if they wanted more than one year, they'd have to tell it to me in the paragraph. So if there's nothing about time, then basically the time is one. And that's kind of the point of these problems. They want to let a car buyer or a home buyer realize what they're actually paying in a year's time in a percentage. Because it's actually higher this way than if you break it down like by the month or something. It Somehow it used to be misleading and people ended up suing over it and they thought they were being misled and they finally just changed the law that every time you buy a house or a car they have to tell you this in the paperwork when you're doing that so do the fraction first right here with any calculator 0424 divided by 12 then add one to that plus one so i just got a real long decimal in a calculator 1.00 three 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 there's five threes here at the end 12 times 1 is 12 so now raise your long decimal to the 12th power and then if you minus 1 you'll lose the one that's in front so I just did this to the 12th power and I minus 1 right away point oh four two oh I'm sorry I said it wrong three two oh four three two three three seven and so on and then we got to check where they want this rounded type an integer a decimal rounded to three decimal places and you have to change it to a percentage too so change to a percentage first before you round move the decimal back this way too so you have a percentage and then they want three decimals so four point three two three and the next digit's a three, so we don't add one. 4.323, see how it's a little misleading? You thought you were paying 4.24, but then when you extend it out to the whole year, it actually is 4.32. It's not a big deal, they, it wasn't like a huge ripoff, but people were misled a little bit, so they made it a law that this has to be disclosed, so you realize that. So if you ever bought a car, you might have saw that where you thought there was a certain percentage, but then in the paperwork, they have, to, they have this big APY, and it's always a slightly higher percentage than what the one they were quoting you. And it's just due to the fact that you're compounding every month, so that makes it go up after a while. So it seems like 4.2 per month, but if you actually did it over a whole year, 4.323. And part B is the same thing. They just switched the percentage to slightly higher, 425. And we're compounding quarterly instead of instead of monthly. There's four quarters in a year, just like four, do, four quarters in a dollar. So almost the same thing for part B. One plus 4.25%. If I move the decimal over twice to the left, that'll be 0425. 0425. I'm compounding quarterly, so now I put a 4 here instead of 12. And they just said annual in the paragraph. That's still the same, so that's once. And then minus 1 to get rid of the 1 and make it back to a decimal. So you just divide this fraction first. 0425. Divided by 4, immediately add 1, and you'll get a 1 point number. 1.010625. 4 times 1 is obviously 4 for the exponent. So your calculator should have 1.010625. Just raise it to the fourth power and press enter, and minus 1 to get rid of the 1 in front. So I just got 04318 Move it back two to the right to make it a percentage, 4.3. And then you want three decimals here. So one, eight, and the next digit's a two, so you don't have to add one. If this was a five or higher, then you'd change the eight to a nine. 4.318%.
4.318. So notice that by doing it monthly, it actually got higher in relation to the original number. Doing it quarterly, it's not as bad. So the more often you compound, then the more this affects it and makes it grow higher. And that's, I think, most people do car payments or house payments monthly, so usually people do it to the monthly one. Okay, now we're just gonna solve, some, solve for other variables. How long will it take 4,000 to grow to 12,000 if it is invested at 7% compounded monthly? So we're having 4,000 and 12,000. This is the present value and the future value. Now we're back to that kind of problem. So we only use that one extra formula once. Um, it's probably not even on the test either, but just a, that's a, such a real world example. I wanted to throw that in the homework. But now we're back to what we were doing last time, compound interest, future value for compound interest. So now you're gonna have the A future value equals P present value, and then you have your good old one plus R over N to the NT power. It's just this time the unknown will be time instead of A or P like we did last time. So the very end of the first video, we were doing a lot of problems where we knew either A or P and we were trying to find the other one. So now it's about finding possibly R or N or T. And they said, how long will it take? So we're looking for T time. How long will it take $4,000 to grow to $12,000? Remember that the future value is always larger. How long will it take $4,000 to grow to $12,000 if it's invested at 7% compounded monthly? So 7% is 0 0.07. Compounded monthly is 12 times per year. And then you do the 12 again, and then we don't know T. So I can divide by 4,000 because that's not part of the parenthesis or the exponent. And it turns out 12,000 divided by 4,000 is exactly three. So in other words, you're tripling your money. Your money's gonna triple from 4,000 to 12,000. I could do inside the parenthesis and do 0 0.07 divided by 12, 0 0.07 divided by 12, and add one right away. And you'll literally get one point, whatever the fraction was, plus one, it's 1.00583335 times. Now the issue here is I can't raise it to a power because there's a variable right there. So this is where you have to use logs to help get that out of the exponent. And most calculators have an LOG or an LN button. It really doesn't matter which one you pick. So I'm just going to do LOG log of 3 equals log of this. The reason this helps is then there's a property of logs that lets you bring the exponent down in front. So I would have log of three, and then I would get my 12t right here in front of the log of that one point number. I'll just write it like this because it's so messy to write it every time. And we're just solving for t. We don't care how messy the answer gets. So I'm gonna divide by everything that's not t. I need to divide by 12, and I need to divide by this messy log. And over here, I need to write it. So it's 1.0058 and 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. Because the 12s will cancel, the logs will cancel, and you're left with just T. And even though this is messy and long, this is easy in most calculators to type M. So I don't know, you probably can't see that here. I'm trying to do this so the video is better, but... I'm going to press my log button here on the side. I have a log button, log, maybe you just see the buttons I'm pushing, press log of three. Now, one thing is when I press log, a parenthesis pops up. So log of three, I need to close my parenthesis. 
divided by, and then since there's two things in the bottom, I'm going to put parenthesis 12 log 1.00583333, double close parenthesis. And I just got 15. 0.7401933. And they'll definitely have us round this to something. I'm guessing they're going to say nearest year or nearest tenth of a year. So maybe 15.7 years. It'll take almost 16 years for that money to triple. But this is what people do with college uh, uh, scholarships where you, know, you have a, a child that's born and they're going to be in college in 18 years, so you could invest 4,000 and we grow to 12,000, and then 8,000 of that is interest. So the grandparents or the parents don't have to pay the whole $12,000. Round to the nearest tenth, so 15.7. How many years? So again, T is the unknown. How many years will it take an initial investment to grow from 10,000 to 15? Assume a rate of interest of 15% compounded continuously. So now we're back to this formula right here, the one that sounds like a shampoo. A equals P E to the RT. And T will be the only unknown. So the continuous one is nice. The formula is a little shorter. It's easy to remember the formula too, even though you don't have to memorize them because it reminds me of a shampoo. Pert. So the $2 amounts, the bigger ones, definitely the future value. $15,000 is the future value. $10,000 is the present value. E is that special 2.7 number, but if you have an E button on your calculator, use that. The interest rate was 15%, which is 0.15 T. Divide by 10,000. You can always divide by front constants. This actually will equal exactly 1.5 in any calculator. I got to get that T out of the exponent, so we can only do that with a log. In general, it doesn't matter if you do LOG log or LN log, but if a base is E, then LN is better. If they're all numbers, I use LOG, but if there's an E, I use LN, although you could do LN on the other ones too. So ln of 1.5 equals ln of e to the 0.15t. Once there's a log, then the exponent can come down in front. ln of 1.5 equals 0.15t times ln of e, except I showed you last time that ln of e equals 1. So this part actually disappears because anything times 1 is itself. And then all I have to do is divide by 0.15. This one will be easier to put into the calculator. Divide by 0.15. T will equal this right here. So my calculator has a log button there, and right below it's LN. So I'm typing LN 1.5. I have to close the parenthesis because a parenthesis popped up. Divided by 0.15. Two point seven three. I know that's hard to see, but two point seven zero three, or maybe just two point seven. Little less than three years that would happen. Compounding continuously helps because it the money grows faster and faster and faster, constantly getting interest. Oh, they wanted two decimal places this time. Two point seven zero three. So two point seven zero. How long will it take money to double if it's invested at 3% compounded continuously or 5% compounded continuously? So we're still using the compounded continuously formula. Uh, A equals P E to the RT. Now they left us very generically and said, how long will it take money to double? Remember this one about the 12,000 and the 4,000? If you knew this was 12,000 and you knew this was 4,000, you divide by 4,000 
and notice that comes out to three right here. That's when money triples. So if you want money to double, you just want a two right there. And so in essence, I don't need to mess with the A or the P. It's just going to be a two there because it's like I divided it out. You can basically pick any amount you want for both A and P. It won't matter if it doubles from $100 to $200 or doubles from $5,000 to $10,000. Once you divide, you're going to get a two for that slot. So a little bit of a shortcut there. If you want money to double, you can just say, okay, P divided into A is going to automatically put a two right here. And it was continuously, so we do have E, and then we're looking for the time. So 3% compounded continuously, 3% is 0.03. And now you got to put an LN on both sides so you can get that T out of the exponent. This whole exponent will come down in front of the log. It's one of the properties of logs. 0.03 T times ln of e, but ln of e cancels out, so divide by 0.03. So it's just ln of 2, ln of 2, close parenthesis, divided by 0.03. And let me check how far they want it rounded. Round to one decimal place. 23.10, so that'll round to 23.1. This is such a low interest rate, 3%, it takes a long time for that to happen. 23.1 years. 23.1. The only thing different on Part B is they up the percentage from 3 to 5%. It's not going to affect much else in this formula because of all the stuff that went away. Literally, you can come right to this step right here. The ln of 2 is going to be there because that's what happens when you double money. But the 0.03 will change to 0.05. Sometimes the, the step part 2 can be easy if you compare it to part 1. ln of 2 divided by 0.05... Since the interest rate is higher, it takes less time to do this. Time now is 13.86. So rounding to the nearest tenth would be 13.9. By getting a slightly higher interest rate from 3% to 5%, doesn't seem like a lot, but it would save you almost 10 years of time to double your money. From 23 years to 13. See, here's the example I was talking about. A newborn child receives a $9,000 gift towards a college education from her grandparents. How much will the $9,000 be worth in 18 years when she's going to college if it's invested 7.3% compounded quarterly? They're just trying to throw real-world examples at you. So you get this a lot of times in the homework where you learn the steps and now you're going to see some word problems that involve real-world scenarios. This is no different than what we've done already. We're doing compounded quarterly, so we're back to this formula. Future value with compound interest quarterly is when N is 4. And 18 years, we'll know T. I think we have the interest rate, and then we have the present value. We need to find the future value. Let's keep coming here. Let's go here. So 9,000, that's the present value because the child was just born. This happened right now. How much will she have 18 years from now? That's clearly in the future. And then 7.3 is the interest rate compounded quarterly. So 19, this is just a typical compounding interest problem. Good old A equals P 1 plus R over N to the NT power. How much will this daughter have in 18 years if we invest 9,000 right now? 7.3% is 073. Quarterly, I think it said. If so, that's 4, 4, and then 18 years. Was it quarterly? Just to make sure. I'll go. Compounded quarterly, yes. 
Okay, so divide this fraction first, and you can multiply this too right away if you want. And then this one plus is just going to cause it to be one point, whatever this fraction is. Whatever this fraction is in a calculator, you're going to add one to it, and it'll be one point, whatever that is. 073 divided by 4 is 01825. If you add one, you get 1.01825. Four times 18 in a calculator is 72 for the exponent. So just go ahead and do that right away. So I've got 1.01825. 1 and I can raise that to the 72nd power. And then you multiply by 9,000. So your $9,000 gift... 18 years from now, that's a lot of time to grow interest. It's $33,094 and either 87 cents, because see how there's an 868 eight there. So that third eight is going to add one to the six and make it seven if they want cents. If they want dollars, then we'll just put a five here because of the eight right here. We'll make that a five. So they want dollars or cents. They want cents. So 33,094.87. 33,094.87. That's not bad. The grandparents gave $9,000, and the child gets $33,000 18 years from now, to, and that'll be spent real quick with how expensive college is, but the grandparents gave less than one-third of the amount. There was over $20,000 in free money, really. Now, they had to give up their 9000 and let it sit in a bank for 18 years, but that's the good thing. If you can afford that, that really pays off in the long run. Okay, here's the last one from section 3.2. A promissory note will pay 40000 at a maturity seven years from now. See, that's gonna how much it's going to be worth in the future. Seven years from now, it's worth 40000 That's the future value. Seven years is the time. If you pay 28000 now, there's the present value. What rate compounded continuously would you earn? So we're looking for R, the interest rate. And it is compounded continuously. So back to the shampoo formula. So future value equals PERT, the shampoo. This time we know everything but R. So in the future, we want $40,000. We currently have 28,000. E is always part of the formula. Seven years is the T. We don't know R. So you can divide by 28,000. E to the R7 or 7R, however you want to write that. And then 40,000 divided by 28,000 is a real long, messy decimal. So 1.428571429. But I want to get this 7R out of the exponent, put an LN on each side. LN of this big, long decimal equals ln of e to the 7r. That lets you bring the 7r down. ln e is going to cancel out. And I want r, so just divide by 7. ln of this 1.4 messy decimal all divided by 7 is the interest rate. So ln... 1.428571429, close parenthesis, divided by 7. And I just got 0 0.05095535635. They're definitely going to change that. I shouldn't say definitely. They most likely will change this back to a percentage, so move it over twice. 5.0953, then they're going to have us round here, one, two, three, four decimals. 
round to three decimals, but notice they do want a percentage in the answer. So you gotta look at the fourth decimal. The fourth decimal is only a three, so we don't have to add one. 5.095%. That's the end of section 3.2. We're now gonna be in 3.3. Okay, so 3.3 three and 3.4 are two similar sections. We'll get through 3.3 three today, and then we'll be finishing that up and doing 3.4 tomorrow. Uh, I don't know why this formula sheet has the 3.3 three one, but doesn't have the 3.4. It's somehow blanked out over these years. But what's different in these two sections is we're dealing with what's called an annuity. An annuity is different than all this stuff up here, because in all of this stuff over here, you make this a uh, payment or investment one time. The grandparents gave $9,000 right when the child was born and then they disappeared and they weren't part of it anymore. So if you only do the payment one time, whether you're borrowing or investing, it will grow. But a better way to make it grow is called an annuity. The difference is you make periodic payments and the payments are made at the end of each period. So if the grandparents didn't want to give $9,000 all up front, maybe they want to do $100 at the end of every month for the next 18 years. So not only is that easier on them because they don't have to come up with a large sum of money all at once, but it'll grow faster, actually. So these are very good if you're able to do it. The downside is you've got to be consistent and for 18 years every month make the payments. But actually, if you do a car payment or a house payment, in a sense, it's the same thing. You're paying for the house by paying at the end of every month. You have to pay your house payment or your car payment. So that's sort of like an annuity. So section 3.3 does future value of it. 3.4 does present value. It's really not a different formula entirely. It's taking this formula and solving for P. So I'll do that tomorrow, and then we, you can write it down in your paper somewhere. But Okay, so we have annual deposits. Annual, every year they're going to make a 2,500 payment. And then they'll do it for seven years. It pays 6.45% compounded annually. Okay, so 21. So future value of an annuity, A equals P. Now, notice it looks a lot like this compound interest formula right here. It starts off almost the same way. A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT power. But then the ending is different. It has a minus 1 over an R over N, which the, this doesn't have. So it's just a little more complicated than that. A equals P. 1 plus R over N to the NT. This is what we've already done. For an annuity, you tack on a minus 1 and a denominator where you have the R over N, but the good news is that's the same fraction the first time you calculate it. So these people want to know how much their annuity will be worth in the future if they invest $2,500 every year so annually means you compound annually. That means you pay once a year. And then they're going to do this for seven years. And I should have plugged something in for R. R was 6.45%. So 0645. But the good news is the denominator that we never had before, it's always the same as it is in, inside that parenthesis. And dividing by one's nice because you can just ignore the divided by one. But if it's anything else like quarterly or monthly or daily, then you got to worry about that part. So that'll make things easier. The inside of this parenthesis is definitely 1.0645 because I can just add one to that decimal. The exponent's going to be seven. So if I was doing this, I'd follow order of operations and do the parenthesis first, 1.0645, then the exponent raised to the seventh power. Then you would multiply before you would subtract. So times 2,500, now minus one to get the numerator finished. 
And then the only thing in the denominator is 0645, so divide by that. And this would be worth 60,000 and eighteen dollars and eighty seven cents although maybe they don't want the cents but sixty thousand eighteen dollars and eighty seven cents and all you did was pay twenty five hundred dollars seven times I, they may or may not be doing this in the problem but I want to do it right now because I know it's coming up at some point so if you take what you pay every period, and if you take the final exponent, 7, that's how many times you're going to do it. So 2,500 times 7 is how much of it is your actual money. Because 7 different times you pay $2,500. So you paid $17,500, but you didn't have to come up with the money all at once either. But notice what it grew to. It grew to $60,000 it more than doubled it, almost, it more than tripled i should say because 20 times 3 is 60. so these annuities they can grow so fast because you're constantly adding more to it this is how retirement funds work too they take a little bit out of your paycheck every so often you don't really notice it much but it grows a lot after a while okay now they're doing this a little slower uh, for them, what the I is, I is the first step. Remember how we did R divided by N? You always do that first. The, this textbook calls that I. So you won't have to do this on a test, but if you want to get the homework right, I is 0645 divided by 1, which is 0645. But if it was compounded something else, it would, I'd have to divide it. N is... Seven. That's how many payments you're going to make. Okay, we, they weren't even... Ha I did more to that problem than you had to do. Okay. Here, here's where they want the future value of it. So, now we're ready to do this out. So, we have N is 20 and I is 0 0.05. And then the payments, every so often, you're going to pay $51. Now, the... What they're basically doing is shortening the formula. This is I right here and right here. And then what I call NT, they call that whole thing N. So they're giving you a number 22. And you, you may need to write this on your paper too when you're doing the test. Uh, their formula is 1 plus i to the nth power, and then you have your minus 1 at the end, and then they just have i in the bottom. I like this formula better because it gives you all the individual things you need. This is better for word problems when we get to the end of this section, but since they're trying to teach working with the formula, they're doing it a little slower, I guess, is what's going on here. So they're just telling me the n is 20, so I already know the exponent is 20. They say I is 0.05, so that's going to go in the parentheses and in the denominator. The minus 1 is part of the formula. We're looking for the future value, which is A. And then the present value, or not, see, it's not present value, it's payment. There is no present value here. It's this, this P actually stands for payments because you do this multiple times. That's the difference between an annuity is you do it multiple times. So multiple times, 20 different times, I'm going to pay $51. This is how you go buy a television and you put it on a payment plan. This is how this works. So for the next 20 months, for example, I'm going to pay $51 the best buy, and then I get a big giant screen TV in my house now. So this is nice because this is 1.05. So all I need to do is one, I do the parentheses first, 1.05, then I do the exponent, raise to the 20th power, press enter, minus one to complete the bracket. Now multiply by 51 to finish the top of the fraction, and then finally divide by the bottom. 
Okay, so just paying $51 every so often, it can grow to $1,686.36. Or in other words, say you wanted a television that was $1,600. Well, pay Best Buy $51 each of the next 20 months, which is a little less than two years, and now you got yourself a brand new giant screen television. That's how those payment plans work. So Best Buy, they're the ones receiving the future value of this thing. And it's a good deal for them because if you take 20 times 51, that's not going to equal this future value. 1686.36. So what actually is happening, if you do 20 times 51, you're going to give Best Buy $51 20 different times. So you're actually paying them 1020 but this is worth 1600. So what really happening in the Best Buy example is the TV only costs 1020, but you're going to end up paying Best Buy 1600. They make $600 in interest off you. But if you don't have $1600 in your back pocket like Donald Trump, then that may be the only way you can afford the TV. So it costs you and it's it's not too painful cuz it's only 50 bucks a month. Most people can come up with that. Okay, what if we work backwards? What if we know the future value and we want to know how much our payment should be? This is what, like, you go buy a car, you want to know how much my monthly payment's going to be. So this is almost the same as number 22. It's just now we're going to plug in for the answer instead of, we're going to plug in right here and we're going to search for this one. So the future value equals the payments one plus, and we're going to do the short form in the first, i to the nth power minus one all over i. Because they're telling me what i is. So now I know the future value is 36.32. I'm looking for the payments. I got my one plus. i, they just say i is 0.05, so plug that in. And that's also going to go in the denominator. And then I just need the N. N is 17. So you do the parentheses for innermost parentheses first. So that's supposed to be a 1 there, but it looks like an L. 1 plus 0.05 is literally 1.05. So I did the parentheses first. 1 plus 0.05 is 1.05. Then do the exponent, raised to the 17th power. Then you're doing the bracket, the outermost parenthesis. So minus 1 next. Okay, now since we're solving for this, we got to do this a little slower. So what I have now, let me write it here, is 3632 equals the payments. And this is what I have in my calculator, and then the bottom is 0.05. So in my calculator, you don't want to round this, it's 1.29201818. So you can either do this one step at a time, or the shortcut is we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of what we see here. We're going to put this 0.05 in the top on both sides. And we're going to put this long, messy decimal on the bottom. because the 0.05 cancels the 0.05, the 1.29 cancels the 1.29, and now you're left with payment. So there's a little bit of algebra right there by multiplying and dividing by the opposite. Then you can just type it all in a calculator. 0.05 times 3632 divided by 1.29201818. And let me see if they want cents or dollars, round to the nearest cent. So I would have to pay 140 point, it's 555, so I'll round that up to 56. 
if I pay $140.56 every month, every year, every quarter, whatever it happens to be, then that would, and I do that 17 times, then I'll be able to afford like a $3,600 used car or fancy television if you really want to pay that much for a TV. So that's what the idea is. Every period, if you pay $140.56, That'll be worth three thousand six hundred thirty-two dollars in after the seventeen payments. What if we want to solve for n? So this is number twenty-four. The future value is twelve thousand. Payments, they should tell us that if we're solving for another variable. Payments are $500 a month or whatever the period is. So 500 each pay period. Then you get your one plus I, I is the R over N, but they're doing it in the shorthand way, to the nth power minus one, all over I. They're using the shorthand formula. So one plus, we should know I, i is 0.03 and we don't know n and it's up in the exponent so that means a log is going to happen at some point and then the bottom i is 0.03 so you could add 1 plus 0.03 that's fine you can get a 1.03 there but this time you can't do the exponent because it's a variable you're kind of stuck with this part for a minute. But what I could do is I could multiply this outside stuff, the reciprocal of it. If I multiply with 03 in the top and 500 in the bottom and do that to both sides of the equation, this 500 cancels that 500, this 03 cancels that 03, and I can type all this into a calculator pretty easily. 0 0.03 times 12,000 divided by 500. And that's kind of ironic, but it came out exactly to 0 0.72. If it's a long decimal, you need to write the whole thing down, though. I don't need these outer brackets anymore. There's nothing else there, so I can erase that. This minus one is not part of the parenthesis or the exponent, so I can add one. 1.72 equals 1.03 to the nth power. I don't have an E, so I'm gonna use the LOG log. LOG of 1.72 equals LOG of 1.03 to the nth power. But then, because I have logs, I can bring the exponent down. Log of 1.72 equals n times log of 1.03. Now, log of 1.03 doesn't cancel out the way ln of e does, but that's fine. It's just some decimal number. It's n times that log, so if I do the opposite and divide by that log, that'll get rid of it. And this, you just need some kind of scientific or graphing calculator that can do logs. This will cancel this. N is by itself. So I'm going to do LOG log, that log, not the LN one, of 1.72, close parenthesis, divided by LOG of 1.03, close parenthesis. We're solving for N. This is the number of payments. The number of payments would be 18... 0.347, it's again a long messy decimal as usual. Round to the nearest integer though. So 18, you don't need to round up since there's a three right here. 18 payments would approximately do this, not exactly, but approximately. So you're talking, if you're doing it monthly, you're talking a year and a half would get that done. That's pretty nice. Pay $500 for a year and a half and all of a sudden you have $12,000. Um, I did do that. 18. Am I misreading my calculator? No. Log. 
was it 03? Yep, 500, 12,000. I might have had a slight typo while I was going. I don't think so. Double check. Okay, so payments, one plus I to the N minus one over I. I was 0 0.03. Mm-hmm. Payment 500, future value 12,000. 0.03, let me double check I did that right. 0 0.03 times 12,000 divided by 500 is 0 0.72. Add one is 1.72, 1 1.03. Hmm. Not sure what's, okay, if you have, this happens to you, one thing you can do is use this help down here at the bottom. I'm gonna view an example. So there we have, there's what I had, that fraction, that's how I got 0.72 plus one. Take the log of all sides, yeah. Hmm. 18, I'm not sure what's wrong. Hell in at 1.05. Hmm. Check answer. I did all the steps right, I'm not sure why it's 19. 18.3, that does not round up to 19. So occasionally you might get, the, it's possible there could be a programming mistake that, that it should have been 18, but that is a strange one. I'm not sure why that one didn't work. Okay, so how are we doing for time here? Okay, 24, I'm gonna come back to 24, but I'll, I'll let you know first thing in the video tomorrow what happened with 24. I need to research tomorrow and I don't wanna waste time on the uh, video trying to figure out what's, it might be a slight typo of some kind. Or I'm going to try another one and see if it works. And if it doesn't, then I'll know something's wrong. But if it does, then that just means there was a programming error on that problem. Okay, so this, this is just what is an annuity, So you, in case you've never heard of that before. But it's definitely something like this B answer, a sequence of equal periodic payments. That's what you're doing. Every so often you pay, pay into it. And the payments are made at the end of each time interval. Not the beginning, but the end. So you don't need to know that for a test, but that's the definition of an annuity. And that's what makes it grow more is because you're constantly putting more money into it. So it's like you're making the present value grow more and more and more. Okay, recently more money for you offered an annuity that pays 4.8% compounded monthly, 1648 is deposited every month. How much is it in the account after 10 years? How much of this is interest? Okay, so this is where I would use the longer formula that has more information in it. It's a little, otherwise you gotta figure out what's I and what's N. So to me, I like this formula better when, when you're doing these word problems where you have to fill all the information in yourself. It just gives you more to work with. Okay, so the future value of an annuity is equal to the payments times one plus R over N, or you can call that I if you do like that better. And then I call this NT power, they just call it N, but even their N is times T, minus one over R over N. We're looking for the future value. How much is in the account after 10 years? 10 years from now, how much is it worth? That's in the future. So that means it's worth, or these are the payments, 1648, 1648 are the payments. The interest is 4.8% compounded monthly. 4.8%, that's 0 0.048. Compounded monthly. See the book, this textbook, they would divide that separately off screen and just call that I, but I like to wait to do that later just because it's easier to fill in the formula this way. Then you get another 12 up here, but then you also have to multiply by the number of years. And we want to do this after 10 years. They would go ahead and multiply this already, and that's what they're calling N. 
Now I'm thinking, oh, I had this one here. I was thinking I didn't have that one, but I did. Okay, so 048 divided by 12. So here's what I like about this too, is that this fraction is always the same as this one. So if you do that one time in your calculator, 048 divided by 12 is 004. I like to write it here real quick. And it was exactly that, there was no rounding. This is gonna be your denominator. That's the entire denominator. And then where this one plus is, you're gonna get one point, whatever that is, 1.004. So I've got my 1648 monthly payments. I'm gonna have a 1.004 raised to the 12 times 10 is 120 minus one for the numerator. So the first big goal is to get the numerator down to a single number. The denominator is going to be 004. Once you figure that out, it stays the same for a while. So I would do 1.004 raised to the 120th power in a calculator, multiply by 1648, and minus 1. So I just got a numerator of 2659. Point seven, don't round here because you don't want to round till the end. 741874. Divide that by 004. So this is where, this is the future value. This would be worth 66,000. Nope, I said that wrong. 664,935. And either 47 cents or maybe they just want the dollar, I'd say $35. It does say round to the dollar this time. So it's such a large number, they don't care about the cents. 664, 935. Hmm. 664, 935. Compounded monthly, 10 years. Yeah, I'm doing this right. Payment, one plus R over N to the NT minus one, over R over N. Hmm, that is weird. Six, six, four, nine, three, five. Round to the nearest dollar. Oh, wait, I see what's wrong. So this was my fault. I didn't write this down right. It's 1648, not 648. I think I was doing 648. 1648? No, I had 1648, huh? 1648. 4.8% is 0.48, definitely. 12. 0.48 divided by 12. Yeah, that's right, huh? I'm not sure what's wrong here. Let me keep going. Wow, it's way off somehow. The other one I was doing right, I don't know what was wrong with that one. This one, I'm definitely doing something wrong. 4.8 compounded monthly. How much is in the account after 10 years? So 1.004 raised to the 120th power, minus one times 1648, Oh, I see what's wrong. Yeah, okay. So it's right here. The minus one happens first. See, the minus one is in the bracket. I messed that up right there. Scratch this. So I'm supposed to do 1.004 raised to the 120th power. That's what goes first right there. I was supposed to minus one next. I, I multiplied next. So minus one. Now multiply by 1648. So the correct numerator is 1012.741874. Divide that by 004 will be the answer. Divided by 004 
is 253185 and then a 46 after that. I don't know if you can see that, but 253185. 253185. Yeah, so that was my mistake. I misread my my work here. I had it correct at this point, and then I suddenly changed it there. That can happen. We all have brain cramp mistakes like that. I'm not sure if that's what was going on here. Did I mess that up here too? I'll I'll take a look at that and see what happened on that problem. But yeah, I I, I was doing this one wrong. So that is correct. 253185. If I would have put the parenthesis in the right spot, I would have had it. So how much of this is interest? So here's how you figure this out. I actually showed you this a second ago. I knew they were going to have this eventually. So once you know your payments, whether you find them or they're told to you, they're telling me them here, right here. And once you get the X one down to a single number, which was 120 right there, you are going to pay 1648 at the end of every month, 120 different times. This is how much money you're putting into this thing. 1648 times 120 is 197760. This is all your money that you're putting in there. But it's worth more than that at the end. It's worth 253185. 253185. That's what the account's worth after 10 years. So if you take what it's, the future value is and minus how much you're putting in there, all the rest, whatever this subtracts to, that's all pure interest and free money. This is why people do these investments, is they're getting free money out of this. If you just hit all this money under your pillow, it would only be worth 197000 but by giving it into an account like this, it grew to 253,000 and you made 55,425. That's like a year's salary for a typical person. A whole year's salary for free, free money. 55,425. So once you figure out the future value in part A, then what you do is take the number of years 10 times the payments and that amount gets subtracted from part A and what remains is all free money, all interest. Okay, just to try to keep these videos around an hour, I'll do one more problem. We're at a good stopping point after this one because um, we're about two thirds of the way done and we got we did 14 problems the first day, 13 today, and we got 13 left after this. So in order to accumulate enough money for a down payment on a house, a couple deposits 765 per month into an account paying 6% compounded monthly. If the payments are made at the end of each period, how much money will be in the account after five years? So this is a typical annuity problem. Let's see if I do the formula right this time. This is really no different than number 27 at first. So future value equals payments. Now that's why they put a bracket here so you don't mess it up, but I still messed it up. One plus R over N to the NT power minus one and then over R over N. So they're depositing 765 every month. They have an interest rate of 6% compounded monthly. So that's 06 divided by 12. And then you put the 12 again in the exponent. They wanna do this for five years. Remember the minus one's in the bracket and I messed it up and put it outside the bracket for some reason. 06 divided by 12, do this fraction first every time. And they're actually, they, they try to make this come out nicely when possible. Sometimes it comes out messy. But 06 divided by 12 is going to come out not too bad. It's 005. So then I'll have 765 
the bre the parenthesis will be 1.005 because this is 005 plus 1. The exponent 12 times 5 is 60. Might keep the minus 1 in the bracket. And then the denominator is 005. So you just have to get the numerator figured out and then divide by 005. And the order matters here. You got to do this exponent first, then minus 1, and then multiply. I did the multiplying before the minus 1 last time. So 1.005 raised to the 60th power, minus 1, and times 765. So the numerator is 266.8704. Divided by 005, so they would accumulate this much money, 53,374. And I, if they want cents, it'll be seven cents, but maybe they want dollars, nearest dollar. So they would have 53,374. That's a good down payment for a house. So and they just have to pay $800 a month for five years. And maybe they're renting now and they're saving up so they can buy a house. And then if you were, that's the end of that problem. But if you were to take their monthly payment,